Hey guys, welcome to another video. We're going to be working on the three printer again. I'm going to stand up because it's a bit hard to crouch down to stay in frame. So I'm going to get some waving hands and a bit of a belly, but that's all right. We're going to put a uh, step motor damper on the Z axis this time. Last time we put the damper on the uh, X and Y, which is the left and right and front and back. This time we're going to put one on the up and down, the Z axis. So it's a little bit more involved than the uh, X and Y, and it's not really something that you have to do if you want it quiet because um, most of the time it's using the X and Y like when it's printing it only uses the X for a little step as it comes down for the next layer and also when it's traversing from you know it's homing the bed and when it's dropping down once it's finished a print uh, Z hop and a few other bits and pieces so it's, the Z isn't like a continuous noise but I thought hey now that I've got it quiet in one area I can hear that Z motor a lot more and it's you know chasing the rabbit hole down or the rabbit down the hole so I thought, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. And it turns out it's not too difficult. So you need the uh, the six mil spacer, the uh, the damper there from eBay or whatever, just a usual thing. You also need to print out one of these. This is a spacer because there's a stock spacer in there that drops the uh, motor down inside the case, so it can fit with the uh, the flexible join, the flexible union, uh, which is very good because we can just print out a slightly shorter one that's minus six millimeters, stack them up, and that becomes a stock or the standard thickness. Uh, if you look in the uh, the description below, you'll see a link to Thingiverse. I actually made one of these and uploaded it to Thingiverse. And uh, you just have to print that out. I print out at 0.1 or 0.15 resolution, but you can go to 0.2 or 0.25. The, the resolution doesn't really matter. But what does matter is the infill. Make sure you give it a decent amount. Um, I would say above 50%. I did 50 or 60% because it's going to be under a bit of compressive load. And you don't want that thing to be flexing and moving around because that's going to cause problems with your print. So make, make it nice and solid. It's only a small part, so it shouldn't take too long to print. Anyway, so the other things you're going to need is uh, some M3 by 20 screws. I'm using uh, cap screws, just to, uh, like Allen's, Allen bolts, the same as the machine, so it's you know it all matches up. You need two of those, the 20 mil long M3s. You also need M3 by 6 or M3 by 5 would do, depending on what's available in your area. Uh, two of those as well and uh, maybe some washers as well just to keep things nice and neat and you know do the job of a washer so what we'll do is um, we've got to lift the, the build plate all the way up so we can get underneath and uh, take the stepper motor out we've got to flip the uh, thing upside down and get inside the base but we also need to get underneath the build plate so I'll raise this up I'll home the uh, build plate and we'll listen to what it sounds like now then um, I'll adjust the camera and we'll have a look inside how to get this step motor out. Once we're done, we'll um, see how it sounds afterwards. So I'll go ahead and home this on the OctoPi setup. So you can see here that's got a bit of a buzz to it, the usual step motor sound. Wait till that gets to the top. There we go. So now we've got a lot of space underneath we can work. We've got to undo some bolts down inside here. So I'll um, take the base off. To, to get the base off is really easy. There's just four uh, Allen bolts. Two on the side down the bottom here. And then two more on the side here. So if you flip it onto its side, it's usually the easiest. You don't have to take all the, the uh, extruder out. You can lay it flat on its side. And then you can undo those, uh, those four bolts and uh, get the base off and get inside. So I'll go ahead and do that, adjust the camera, I'll be back in a sec. So here's our stepper motor here, the uh, the Z stepper motor. Now you see a few other modifications I've got around here and here, which I'll talk about that later in another video once I've finalised what I'm doing here, but for today we're just looking at this one. This is our Z stepper motor, so I've got to take this out. Now before you take the base off, don't forget to uh, unplug the power and make sure it's all turned off and in fully isolated. There's uh, live voltages, like mains voltages around here, so you don't want to have that plugged in and then touch something, because it's not worth dying for something like this. So make sure you've got it unplugged, leave it for a few minutes just to discharge and whatnot, and then um, you can open it safely. So first of all, we'll, we'll unplug that, because I want to forget and then try and yank this out and damage the plug. So I've got that unplugged. Now to take this off, we've got to get to the other side again. Uh, there's two screws holding it in, and then of course the, uh, the shaft we have to loosen off the the flex join. So I'll tip it up and uh, we'll undo that. Then this step motor will just drop straight out. Okay, so from the top again, 
these two screws here, they're the two that hold the stepper motor in. There's actually four holes, but they only put two screws in because I guess it's hard to get underneath there with this block. Now we're gonna have to play around with that because uh, we need to put one at the back and one at the front diagonally opposite because the uh, damper, you go diagonally opposite and diagonally opposite. So we'll play around with that a bit. And then once we've got those undone, we also need to undo this one here. That's for the uh, flex shaft. So yeah, loosen that one and those two. So let's go ahead and get those out. And that stepper motor should come out relatively easy. Oh, that's a bit smaller. Oh, that's that size though. Okay. Okay, they're loose, and I need a slightly smaller one for in here. That's a two mil. Ah. Okay, so that has just dropped out. <laughs> no worries. We'll grab those uh, screws. All right, next you're gonna have to undo these four. This is a five mil Allen key. One, two, three, four. Be careful because when you undo that, it'll drop down until it hits the panel. So just uh, hold that and support it so it doesn't drop and damage anything. Then also at the top, there's uh, two. There's a smaller block with two screws. Uh, undo that as well because we need to lift that up at the whole lot up enough to be able to put our screw in through the back and then tighten it up. So uh, go ahead and undo these. And then the, the two at the top, remembering to support the plate. And uh, that will give us our clearance that we need. Okay, so I got that loosened off. It's just sitting on there, and uh, that's a top block. That once you undo the two bolts, that'll just lift straight off the shaft. So be careful and hold support things while you're doing this. You don't want to bend anything. Now, once that's uh, you got it to this stage, wind the uh, the table down a bit, the build plate. And that'll let us lift this up and out the way. So you got a lot of space in there now. So you can wind it down a bit, just so it gives you a good amount of space in there. All right, next step, we want to go and get that seven motor and then we'll put the uh, the damper on. So there's a spacer, this is the motor with the uh, coupler on, you don't have to remove that, that can stay on there. You can see the uh, height difference, that's the new one, that's the old one. I made the uh, inner hole a bit bigger, so it will sit on there and give it a bit of thickness, a bit more strength, you know. There's enough clearance there, it's not a problem at all. So we're gonna put this on here, and that's going to sit on top. Then we'll put the bolts all the way through from the uh, the top above the, uh, the bottom plate of the uh, printer and that will hold it in nicely. So it's just a matter of putting in our screws. I'm going to use a bit of uh, low strength Loctite, the uh, purple stuff, 222. That's just going to um, help prevent these from vibrating loose. Don't need too much on there. I'll just nip that up. Don't do it too tight because uh, you don't want to strip these out. But just just firm. You don't need to reef on them and crank them really super tight. All right. I'll put the lid on that. Now that's our damper installed. All we got to do, keep that as a spare, put that aside, and we can put that one on, and that can go back in the machine. So it's a little bit tricky because you got to hold a few different things and get your. Uh, your longer screws ready, your 20 mils. Now you can't reuse the old uh, screws because they're too long. See they're, they're a bit longer there. And that's if we try and use them, they're gonna come down and try and screw into the motor again. That's why I need the shorter ones, so they stop before the motor. 
Okay, so we're back underneath. I've got the thing on the, on the side so that it's easy to hold everything. I don't have to support the build plate because it's kind of running sideways. I'm not fighting gravity. Now I've pushed the build plate all the way to the top of the machine. That way I've got a good amount of space here to put the, uh, the bolts through. And we take our motor and the motor is going to sit with our new spacer and our new damper right there like that. Perfect fit. So I'll get the uh, screws and once again a little bit of the old Loctite just on the very end. And we'll stick that one through. I've got to see which one. Okay. There. Apparently I can't use the washer because the 20 mil is just a bit too short for that. But that's not a big deal. Okay, now for the uh, second screw. I guess if you could find 22 mil screws, that would be perfect. Now the stepper motor's got a little bit of play on it, so make sure you line it up before you tighten it. Lined up with your uh, with the uh, rod, the the screw rod. You don't want to have any uh, sideways force. Once you've got that all tightened up, we can plug that in. And that's all we need to do for underneath here. You can put the uh, the base back on and flip it back up on its feet. So now we have to do is put the bearing block back up the top here and then tighten it down the bottom as well. So it's a number five or five millimeter Allen screw. The top bearing block just drops on and screw straight in. And the bottom one just screws straight in too. Not too tight again. Just tight enough. All right, that well, feels pretty good. And the last of all, we just have to tighten the little screw for our flex coupling. Can't forget that or we won't be moving anywhere. All right, now how does that look? That's moving nice and free. So we'll turn this thing on. I'll run it up and down just to make sure it's not binding. And then we have to just level the, uh, the print bed.
All right, so we've got it all back together. It seems to be working. I uh, tested a little bit up and down to make sure it wasn't binding and it's all looking good. So let's give it a home. See what it sounds like. Sound a little bit quieter to me. It's not a, as drastic impact. Not as drastic impact as the X and Y, but that's probably a function of how the motors are mounted. The X and Y are probably acting more like a sounding board and amplifying through the vibration of the frame. Uh, the Z, did have an impact so I'll still give it a thumbs up but um yeah I would say it's it's not critical to do that if you want it quiet the big one is the X and Y but yeah it is it's still worthwhile if you got nothing else better to do all right guys that's it for this video don't forget we've got the Patreon keep watching videos we'll see you next time